We're back at it again at the whiteboard. I know you're not tired of seeing me here yet. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is how to track progress, how to measure progress for your fitness, for your health, for your goals, for what have you. Uh, really today we're going to be talking more about the fitness component, okay? Um, and so <clears throat> let me write this down here, how to measure fitness progress. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, there's a few things that we need to make sure that we do track on the fitness progression uh, to make sure that we have ample data to know if we're progressing, regressing, if we're staying the same, if we have weaknesses, super big strengths, if we're overdoing something, underdoing something. And what I think that we need to do to have this and what we recommend that our clients do and what I track is the following. So we're looking at um, our overall Okay, weekly volume per muscle group. Okay, the log of the actual numbers, actual numbers per set week over week. <clears throat> we are also looking for maybe a rating of RIR, RPE, or just difficulty. So rate of perceived exertion, right? How difficult was this? RIR, reps in reserve. Right? How many reps do we have left when we complete this set? Realistically, you just need to have an, an understanding, you know, qualitative, right? Qual or quantitative measure of difficulty. Okay, so this can be, you can use any kind of, any kind of model you want there. I mean, you could rate it from one to 10, how difficult it was. You could say, um, you know, I had, you know, it's an eight out of 10, so I only had two more reps or, you know, I had two reps, reps in reserve. It, it doesn't really matter. Like don't get hung up on the way that you're going to track that. Just find a methodology or a method or a modality that works best for you there and, and make sure that you're there. So we're gonna look at overall weekly volume, okay? We're gonna look at the actual reps and set numbers. And we're also going to look at potentially weight and then if you have access to a DEXA or a body, uh, an in-body, right? So an, a, a body composition scan. Um, so this is, this is impedance, right? And a DEXA is kind of holy grail <laughs> of that. Um, so we're gonna go there and then potentially also, we're gonna look at our, um, our food log, okay? Our macro food log. Now, we're not gonna get hung up on on necessarily the specific foods or the timing of meals or when we had this carbs or those protein or what have you, just overall, how are we eating, right? How are we eating and how does this correlate with our protein goal daily? Basically, how compliant have we been, right? And then probably the last thing here would be, um, would be out of gym activity. Okay, and overall for the out of gym activity, for me, I really just like to look at what it looks like for our steps. I think that that's an easy measure that we can all understand. Doesn't ever complicate anything. We don't have to do some weird formula. It's just like how many steps did you get and, or how many did you not get, right? So measuring our progress. What we'd like to see outside of deload weeks, okay? So deload weeks, not in, in not considered into your overall progress, right? Deload is to deload, is to not continue to try to progress heavy to give your, your body, your CNS, your body a little rest, and then you get back to it. But overall, our weekly volume, are we staying in between the 10, uh, 10 to 15 if we're brand new or 15 to 20 um, sets per muscle group per week? Are we in that position? If we are, it's a binary. It's a check yes or no, okay, overall, but then you can go down two specific muscle groups and check that. So like maybe, you know, for me in, as an example, I hit quads, um, I mean, I'm pretty quad dominant. So for a long time, I, I did a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of quad work, very little hamstring work, very little glute work, okay? My butt is not the same development, is not in the same development area that my quads are. And, and that is what it is, right? It's objective, it's a piece of data. Understanding like, hey, yes or no overall volume for our muscle groups in general, we're hitting that. If not, if the answer is is no, okay, then which muscle groups are we doing more volume? Which one are we doing less? How are our workouts, um, what are our workouts comprised of and how are they set up 
to make sure that we can, you know, handle the inefficiencies and then continue to be uh, a check yes Juliet on all the things that we're already doing on a consistent basis that are solid, right? And then also looking at the, the actual numbers, the weights that we put up for specific rep ranges and, um, and look at that week over week. So like, you know, if for the next four weeks we have three by eight to 10 front squats, Okay, what does that number look like? Have we jumped five to 10 pounds? Are we actually able to progressive overload <clears throat> every session there? Or are we getting kind of hung up? And, and do we need to look at something else to figure out if there's something else going on, right? Are we increasing? And it doesn't mean that it's, you know, it's gonna be linear, okay? The, the graph doesn't have to go like this, right? We don't need that to happen. But, you know, are we, is a line of best fit up? Okay, because if it is, then we're on the right track. Now, line the best fit doesn't need to be up for everything to include our weight, <laughs> because that doesn't tell us objectively that we're in the right place. Uh, like our body weight is what I'm talking about. But overall, for all of these rests and sets, uh, excuse me, these sets and these these exercises, is our line of best fit increasing with the weight we're, we're able to move with solid form, right? And do we have maybe anything like any nagging injuries or anything kind of going on there? We need to look at that. And then also, you know, it, it brings us down, you know, here's one, here's two. The third thing here would be a qualitative or quantitative measure of how we're feeling with the amount of volume that we're doing. Um, you know, I would bring this back down to exercise, um, exercise or completed day. So like, you can either rate it overall by like your actual full session, or you could rate it per exercise. Uh, and you can put some notes in that. Um, and this can be done like, look, all of this. So looking at your, um, you know, your weekly volume, obviously this can be something that you track at a fitness app. Um, same thing with the numbers, same thing with the qualitative or quantitative measure. You can do that in a fitness app. You can also do that in a damn notebook, right? Some of the oldest lifters that I used to work out with when I was back in high school and, and otherwise, they just sit in a notebook, right? As long as it's easy, easily accept, accessible, excuse me, and it's something that you can read, sick. I, I don't really care where you put that in. You just need to make sure that you pay attention to what's going on there. So qualitative or quantitative, I would recommend that you do this at minimum as frequently as every session, okay? So this be something that you do every single session and maybe so far so far granular down as, um, as doing every exercise. So not every set, <laughs> but every exercise. So if you have three sets, you're gonna do it for the three sets, right? An overall metric for all three sets combined, right? And realistically, you know, to measure our progress, just like in a, in, a, in a big macro sense, are we progressive overloading? Are we able to increase our weight with holding rest and holding sets constant, right? Are we able to do that week over week? That's kind of in the macro, like pie in the sky. That's kind of where we want to make sure that we're going, right? So coming back to number three, you know, qualitative or quantitative measure of difficulty, I would look at this on a session, at minimum, a session level or maybe even down to like overall the three sets of X exercise, right? And go there. And then, you know, this is an, an interesting one and can be taken out of context, right? Weight is not God, right? So your weight on the scale is not going to tell you everything. It's not even gonna tell you that much other than where the data point is that you are, right? This can fluctuate up and down by how many times you take a shit. This can fluctuate up and down based on how much sodium, how much hydration, how much sugar you've had, how many carbs you've had, right? It is a data point to have, to utilize in conjunction with the rest of it, but it's not something that it's gonna be like, hey, weight is the determinant of how, how much we're progressing. Bump that, that doesn't make any sense, but I do want you to be in a position where you are weighing semi-regularly so that you can, you can look and see if there are irregularities in your progress. How does that correlate with the weight? Because it'll probably tell you something. It's a measure to have, it's not the measure that should be held in the highest regard, it's it's not God again, right? And then number five, uh, this is going to be something, and actually let's not even put DEXA five. Um, let's say, so let's look at um, the food log being number five. You know, are you intentionally hitting the protein goal that you're setting for yourself? And there's a couple different ways to come up with this. I mean, you could go um, with what science says, for overall just protein intake, 1.62 grams of protein per kg of body weight overall, right? How do you get kgs? 
You divide your, you divide your, or you, excuse me, you divide your weight, your weight in pounds by 2.2, that'll give you kg. So you can go that direction. What you could also do is you're like, hey, bump that. That's not that much. That's not that much protein. I prefer to eat more protein. That's cool. No one's going to stop you. You could go one pound, one gram of poach protein per pound of body weight that you are currently or that you want to be, right? If you want to be 115 or 200, maybe 150 a day. You can go that direction. You could also look at going against you know, lean tissue. So like if you have a hundred pounds of muscle and you found out you had a hundred pounds of muscle because you looked at an in body or a DEXA. So you got that legitimately from something that will give it to you more accurately than you guessing or using taping, right? Let's say you want to do that and you just go one, you have a hundred, hundred grams of mu or hundred pounds of muscle on you, right? Then you can go, you know, between one to 1 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean mass which would be muscle. You can go kind of any, any direction there. I'm not gonna tell you you should eat this protein or eat that protein. Many people use those different methodologies, different ways to do it for different reasons, right? Pick one that works for you that you can stick to that's easy to understand is not hyper complex. Because the last thing that you wanna do is ever complicate any of this shit, then it all goes out the window and then what are we even talking about anyway? So that would be number five. And then number six, we're looking at out of gym activity. Now, recent, Recent science would state that if you're under 60 years old, between 8,000 and 10,000 steps a day is optimal to lower all-cause mortality, right? And cardiovascular disease risk between 8,000 and 10,000 steps a day. Okay, that's a decent amount of steps for most people that are sitting at the desk if you're under 60 years old. And then if you're over 60 years old, we're looking at between 6,000 and 8,000 steps every single day. Okay, this is not 50,000 on one day and then 2,000 every other day. This is legitimately every damn day. So my rec would be between that eight to 10 for everyone under that. And then, you know, the six to eight for everyone over. So over 60 years old, under 60 years old. Okay, so that's what I would say, but realistically, if, if you're anywhere on the board and you don't walk a ton, if you just want to pocket 7,500 or 7,000, that's cool too. Okay. You can, yeah. I mean, look, it's your adventure. Do what the hell you want to do. I would just recommend that you look at that because if we're looking at progress, it is a multi variance equation here. It's not just how much weight can we push in the gym because some people can sling 400 pounds, you know, 405, four plates, four wheels on bench, but then you know, six months down the road, they tear their labrum or they pop their bicep off the bone or they yank their pec out. Like it, it's not just one. You want to be holistic. You want to be intentional about looking at multiple things because there are things that play into your journey overall more than others. But if I had to just parse it all down, right, look at your weekly volume, Make sure that you have an understanding and you're tracking the numbers that you're putting up for each individual exercise week over week so that you can look at trends, right? And you have a qualitative or a quantitative measurement assigned to those exercises or at least the session at very least. Then, you know, number four, are you tracking your weight moderately consistently, right? Number five, do we understand how the hell we're eating? Number six, what is our out of gym activity? What do our steppies look like every day? And my, my recommendation would be just pocket somewhere around 7,500 if you don't want to get crazy with the other stuff. And then, you know, number six here is, um, or actually number seven here is, you know, if you have access to an in-body or a DEXA to understand where you're at, that is a very, those are very expensive things to utilize. In-body, not so much. You can probably go to your local gym and spend 150 bucks and get it done. A DEXA is going to be more than that. DEXAs are highly accurate. So and they're precise. If that's something you want to do, cool to have an understanding of where you're at right now, but also know that you don't need a DEXA or an in body to make steps and take, um, take movement and push in the direction of better progress in fitness. You literally just need to, uh, you need to do the other things, right? You can use number seven for, for a little marker, a track, maybe you do, maybe you save enough money, you put enough money on the side to do an in-body today. And then in six months you do another one or in three months you do another one, you pay your gym just outright for it. And that's cool. You don't need it, right? Because you're going to be able to see changes, right? In how you look, right? Progress photos. That's another thing. I didn't even think about that. Okay. 
let's go, we'll call this number eight, but really let's call this, that would be technically seven and Dexo would be eight. Uh, progress photos, they'll tell you a lot, okay? <laughs> Maybe your weight doesn't move, right? Maybe your weight on the scale doesn't move. Maybe your weight and exercises don't move, but maybe your progress photos have you looking like Shrimp McGee one day and then, uh, you know, booty bone naked, you look like you're, you're dummy fit, right? In the right places with abs. Who knows? Progress photos, right? Don't know how I missed that. But that's gonna be something that's also overwhelmingly beneficial for you right, to look back on retrospectively. It also can give you a lot of confidence looking at where you've gone. And also, if you have those dated, right, and you have your your logs dated, and you have your weight, where's weight, dated, you might be able to just draw some, not conclusions, but some correlations to where you feel your best when you're moving a certain amount of weight, when you're weighing, a certain amount, when you look a certain way, when you're eating also X amount of protein. Okay. Overall, we got eight things. DEXA is the only one that I would say you don't really need DEXA in body. You don't really need the rest of it. If we're intentional about that, you should be able to do this yourself. No problem. You won't need a coach. You won't need, um, you know, Wes Watson in your, in your ear. You won't need me in your ear. You won't need fucking athlete next, Jeff Cavalier. You won't need really anyone, Kino body, et cetera, et cetera. You won't need anyone. If you understand this stuff, you don't need anybody else, okay? You can do this yourself. If you want some more help, slide my DMs. If you don't, sick. This content is made for you to be able to do it yourself. Hope that helps. Peace.